Date, Standardized Human Time, September 5, 2136. The essential Terran dignitaries were present in the meeting hall, alongside the top-ranking Venmal staff. I settled down in the chair between Noah and Cam, which was turning into the typical seating arrangement. There was satisfaction in finding the Predator's presence so, normal and routine. The importance of this conference could not be understated. The UN was determining which parties to take action against in the Federation and whether diplomatic avenues could prove a suitable alternative to violence. There was no reversing the war against the Gojids, the damage done to their repute by Sovlin was catastrophic. But perhaps not everyone had to get suckered into this shit show. That was why I hoped Resell would show at the meeting. The Federation officer hadn't left his room since his arrival and had barely picked at the meals we delivered by his door. My attempts to speak with him were met with a half-hearted go-away. It was all I could do to info-RM him of the planned start time and remind him once more on my way to the assembly hall. In case the Coltion did accept our invitation, we wanted to make him as comfortable as possible. The humans were wearing opaque visors to conceal their eyes and surgical masks to obscure their menacing snarls. The UN personnel were quite accommodating, it would likely be standard procedure for any future first contacts. My eyes flickered over to Noah. Without the predatory features to buff up the humans, they looked squishy and weak. Those hands were more attuned to picking berries or climbing trees than combat, which was probably close to the truth. They lacked any form of camouflage for stealth and weren't that quick. Even their smell and hearing were subpar. What kind of predators are they? They always mention tools when asked, then change the subject, I thought. Perhaps they're ashamed of their natural weakness? I look ridiculous in this, Tarva. I'd prefer a full helmet, rather than this cyborg doctor cosplay, Noah hissed. I stifled a laugh. I understood half of what you said. But this allows you to drink water and I hope it's less stuffy. You must have been miserable on that first TV appearance. Oh, I think I was just trying to remember to breathe. You have no idea how in awe we were. The ambassador leaned back in his chair and waved a hand for emphasis. I realized how important that moment was. Sometimes, I still think to myself that I dreamed it all. It is like a fever dream, isn't it? It's all so strange. Oh, um, speaking of strange, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Go on. We've noticed some unusual behavior from your human volunteers. Mildly concerning. Dear God, what have we done? Just all sorts of bizarre reports, which I am increasingly baffled by. Multiple cases of humans speaking in high-pitched voices when asking Venlil to do things, or even saying hello. Oh, yeah, I can see that giving us toys that make ear-piercing squeaks when touched. Sometimes throwing objects and begging us to retrieve them. I don't understand the purpose. Achim, that would be demeaning, sorry about that. And you're so obsessed with our fur. Always trying to touch it and talking about how soft it is. Some people suggested you wanted to harvest it. Noah recoiled, and I figured his eyes were wide with horror. Nothing like that. We just, like cute animals. Why? It sparks our nurturing instincts. Releases dopamine, which makes us happy. But you don't do any of that. You're a planetary leader, and I'm a terrifying beast to you. It'd be wholly inappropriate and unprofessional. Though I confess, as for the last one, the thought has crossed my mind. You don't scare me anymore, Noah. But if you must, I'd prefer you try any fur petting on Cam than me. I'd get a laugh seeing him bite your head off. Deal. Cam glared at us, clearly eavesdropping on our conversation. Don't even think about it. Tarva, it's going to be your fault if Noah loses a finger or two. Good thing I have ten of them. Noah stretched a hand in the military advisor's direction, and the Venlil jumped up from the table. The human brought his arm back to his chest with a laugh. I'm kidding, Cam. I'd only do that if you asked me to. 
Secretary General Meyer broke off his conversation with his generals. Well, I see we're all wonderful at sitting still. Aren't we, Ambassador Williams? Uh, we were just playing around, Noah replied. I see that. A lot of mature adults here. The UN leader heaved an exasperated sigh. I was no expert in human body language, but his posture screamed exhaustion. Right, this meeting was supposed to start ten minutes ago, no sign of resell. Let's get started. I pulled up the briefing material on my holopad and refreshed my memory one last time. The human generals had forwarded a proposition for a ground invasion of the Gojit home world. I'd given it a cursory review in advance of this gathering and discussed with my advisors what our role should be. It was ironic, since I knew what those plans were derived from. They were offshoots of the original tactics we drew up together to invade the Arxer. Brandishing those ideas against our former allies, which were designed to raid sentient farm worlds, felt dirty. There were some modifications, stressing the preservation of civilians where possible. I was surprised to see the humans adhering to their warfare rules, under the circumstances. The stated objective was to capture government leaders and to force the Gojiti Union's capitulation. I couldn't disagree that the only way to bring them to the negotiating table was at gunpoint. They'd amassed an annihilation force from the discovery of a single human. I take it we're all familiar with this operation. It's an ambitious task, I know, General Zhao stated. General Jones tugged at her mask. But ground fighting and atmospheric warfare, that's our territory. I'm confident in our chances. The problem is which ships to use for the battle above. To transport a proper amount of soldiers, Zhao finished. Candidly, our ships just don't cut it in any way. You'll use Venlo ships for whatever you need for now, and that's final. We'll give you our blueprints too, so you can build yourself a proper armada. I glanced at Noah for support and was relieved to see an encouraging nod. With our knowledge in hand, I know you can make improvements on our designs. It will help us both in the long run. I don't wish to keep anything from you anymore. That's very generous of you, Governor. Thank you, Meyer said. We will repay. The door creaked open, which about made me jump out of my fur. A violet-skinned Colshan slunk into the room and surveyed the occupants with hesitancy. I was grateful the humans had kept their face coverings on. Even with the precautions, the Federation officer was trembling. My ears perked up. Resell. We didn't think you were coming. Please, sit down. It was promising that he showed up, since he was the best hope of peace. Then again, he was a wild card. Resell could outright insult the humans and inflame the situation. I don't think the UN representatives, or for that matter, any Venmal present would take kindly to a defense of Sovlin's actions either. I wasn't sure I would come myself, the Colshan sighed. But we must all live with the choices we make. Here I am. It's come to my attention that you find it hard to look at us. Secretary General Meyer gestured to his facial attire. We've elected to wear these visors so that you don't feel that we're staring at you. Does that help? Resell waved his tail. Yes. Thank you. No, thank you. You have the sincere gratitude of our planet for your heroism and compassion. Knowing your feelings toward predators, I suspect you will decline my offer. But we are more than willing to grant you asylum on Earth, should you so desire. I appreciate the offer. You diverge from the Arxer in many ways that I have seen. But I don't think I could ever live among you. We understand. If you truly cannot abide our looks, I mean, it's hurtful, but not unexpected. Meyer's words about the sting of the galaxy's cold-shouldered treatment rang true. My mind flickered back to how wounded Noah looked when he learned that the Venmal planned to kill humanity. The crestfallen look on his face when I described my initial impression of him to resell. Maybe I shouldn't have been quite so honest, even if it soothed the first officer. The human played it off as a joke, but I suspect he did need some kind words on occasion. 
It must be awful to be shunned as a monster constantly, to feel rejected and unwanted. To have every action under a microscope. Noah had been dealing with Venmal gawking or panicking at the sight of him for months. Did he understand that I cared for him, despite my instincts? I patted Noah on the hand absent-mindedly, and he squeezed my paw in return. Resell drew a deep breath. All right. W. What else do you want of me? Coexistence is all we ask, from anyone, Meyer replied. I don't know how to achieve that from a federation that seeks to genocide humanity. I'd like your opinion, because my own outlook is quite bleak. Some in the federation may be open to hearing your case, if they can get past the, you know. I've had a lot of time to think, and I believe human history may have been studied through a narrow lens. It's so ingrained that predators are inherently evil. We might have overlooked the forest for the trees. And where does that leave us? I don't think the Gojids are the only ones plotting an attack in the Federation. If you have any ideas for a peaceful resolution, I'm all ears, but we intend to defend Earth to the last. The Colchian's demeanor shifted in an instant, and suddenly, an authoritative officer was present. You can start by releasing the hostages. Now, peaceful species don't hold diplomats and civilians against their will. That was my doing, Resell, I chimed in. After what happened with Marcel, you can see why I thought it necessary. But I agree with him, Tarva. It reflects poorly on humanity, because, regardless of the truth, everyone will fault us in that matter. The Federation must be worried for their citizens' condition. Meyer tapped his fingers on the table, deep in thought. It will help our case for their own people to validate what has been said by the Venlo. We should allow anyone to leave that wishes to. News of our existence is out, Noah added. The damage is already done. There's no reason to keep them here. I flicked my ears. Very well. I'll reopen the borders tonight, at least for outbound ships. Resell's eyes widened in surprise. It was obvious the officer had been expecting resistance, rather than for the predators to side with him. Good. That's settled. Any other ideas, Resell? Meyer asked. Um, the Federation is holding a summit, a few days from now. They're going to discuss what to do regarding humanity. You could send a representative. Perhaps they would let you say a few words in your defense? What's to stop the Federation from covering up anything we say? Any information we give them, or anything that contradicts their narrative? It sounds like your leadership has already made up their minds. The Federation aren't out to dupe their own citizens. They just can't have another Arxer. Everything will be broadcast, so even if the leadership won't budge, you could sway public opinion. But you hardly sound convinced that the Federation will let a human speak at all, Resell. What's to stop them from slapping a collar on our representative and bashing their face in two? Or shooting them on sight? Honestly? Nothing. I can't predict how they'll react. I would have thought we were better than that at one time, but I don't anymore. I couldn't send anyone to that fate. It would be akin to murder. I swished my tail in agreement. After watching a human pilot, brutalized at the hands of a Federation crew, the risks were fresh in everyone's memory. It was a senseless sacrifice, that could be for nothing, the Federation would be reluctant to let a predator voice its thoughts. Resell knew better than anyone how deep-seated their hatred ran. I'll go, Noah said. My pupils snapped toward him. Absolutely not. I don't want to see you killed, or maimed as a lab rat. I'm not afraid of dying. If there is a single species like the Venmal out there, I find it a worthy cause. The ambassador gave me a reassuring pat on the shoulder, then turned his head toward Meyer. All I ask is for a cyanide capsule. I don't know if I could bear torture. I want a way out, if it comes to that. The secretary general hesitated. Are you sure? I couldn't tell you, not with a straight face, that I believe you'll come home. Quite sure. And I'd like to leave as soon as possible. There's no time to waste. 
horror chilled my blood. The last person I wanted to fall into Federation custody was sweet, forgiving Noah. He was a godsend in the ambassadorial role, always with a perfect read on my emotions and willing to answer every awkward question. I had come to think of him as one of my own advisors. Perhaps I was a bit too reliant on him to defuse tense situations. I'll go with you, then, I hissed. I'll try to protect you, though I don't think I can do much. My standing with the Federation has diminished. Tarva, no. What if they hurt you? They threw a venlol in a cage with a starving predator, remember? They won't do that to me. I'm a planetary leader, and the galaxy will be watching. I am not worried for my safety. Resell lowered his eyes. Please allow me to accompany you as well. I wish to turn myself in for high treason. We don't want you punished for helping us, Meyer said. I know. But my testimony may be helpful in balancing what Sovlin has told them. And I wish to be home, whatever happens. My heart lies with the Federation. If that is really what you want, you're not a prisoner. Disappointment seeped into the UN leader's tone. I do wish you would reconsider though. I won't. Very well. Good luck to all of you then. Noah stood up from his chair and extended his hand to the Secretary General. Meyer tugged at it in that quirky, grappling ritual humans did. It felt like a final goodbye though I hoped that wasn't the case. I wondered what the gentle ambassador could say that would dissuade the Federation. He needed to challenge hundreds of years of research and flip assumptions without getting killed. It was a tall task, even for a man who epitomized the best of humanity. Date, standardized human time, September 10, 2136. Two patrol ships rushed to intercept our transport the second we crossed the Zerulian border. There was none of the warmth in their greeting that I craved. I hoped that dodging Gojid territory would lower the temperature of any interactions, but word traveled quickly. Our neighbors possessed a keen awareness that the Venlal had thrown in our lot with predators. We were guilty by association now. I assured the Zerulians of my diplomatic intent and decided not to mention the human's presence until we reached our destination. After several back-and-forth conversations, the guards received permission to escort us to the summit. I suspect they wouldn't have allowed it if they knew a human and a traitor were the other two passengers. The Federation chaperones were diligent, tailing us through subspace for the duration of the day's long trip. I still don't know how I'm going to convince them to let a predator play politics. Maybe I should just wing it. Our transport was midway through its descent now plunging through the host planet's atmosphere. It was apparent what Resell meant by returning home. The Colchian home world, Afa, a name that translates to garden, was hosting the convention in its capital. It would require great care not to incite a stampede with the crowd I anticipated. Millions of residents dwelled among artistic buildings and botanical wonders, the renowned school of the flora meant Afa had a large student population. There would be ample spectators at the governing hall, since such sessions were open to the public. If a predator was reported on the loose, the premises might be vacated or locked down. I wondered if the nearest civilians would be rushed to bunkers, the way I had done when the humans approached my planet. It seemed silly, in retrospect, sending out a planetary distress signal over a two-person vessel. Someday, I was going to tell Noah that I intended to surrender Venlal Prime to him. The Terran ambassador would have a hearty laugh at my expense. This is Governor Tarva. I reiterate my request to speak to the presiding chieftain immediately. It is urgent. I transmitted, for the fourth time. My designated strategy was to hail the Federation over the media channels so that if anything went wrong, the public could hold them accountable. Resell was sandwiched beside me, in order to appear on our video feed. The Colchian officer couldn't stop yawning, his orange eyes were bleary from sleep deprivation. I was amazed he hadn't nodded off from exhaustion, regardless of his instincts. Noah was preoccupied editing the first contact materials the UN had thrown together. The predator seemed uncharacteristically nervous. 
I knew he wanted to paint a rosy picture of humanity and to include anything that might help their cause. Wasn't he displaying that closed body language he explained to me long ago? Maybe I was projecting my feelings onto him since I was terrified about what would happen to him next. He's signing on now. Please, be patient, came the monotone reply. Your favor here is strained as things are, Governor. I was aware of the fact that our ship was target-locked, that wasn't exactly standard procedure for an approaching diplomat. A large security force was present to ward off any arcs or attacks, in case they got a whiff of the convention's location. The Federation couldn't afford to have every galactic leader killed in a decapitation strike. We're not part of the Federation anymore, are we? I realized, with a pang of sorrow. The Venlal are public enemy number one. I'm probably going to be offering our withdrawal today, if they don't kick us out first. The Terran ambassador clapped his hands together, in what I believed was satisfaction, and jolted me out of my thoughts. Resell whined at the unexpected movement, and the human dipped his head in an apology. All set, Tarva, Noah whispered. Send it over. I tapped a button on my holopad, uploading the data cache to the local internet. The compilation documented everything that had transpired since first contact. It also went over humanity's surprising ability to form attachments and the cultural nuances the Federation overlooked in past research. That was the narrative I wanted to circulate. I shared the file wherever I thought it could get traction, social media, discussion boards, and private messages to reporters. With any luck, a few figures in the media would pick it up and ignite a public discourse. Even if they were laughing at the notion, it would introduce viewers to the idea of a friendly predator. You. A colchon with indigo coloration appeared on screen, and I recognized him as the senior chief Nikonis. A scowl marred his features as he spotted the officer beside me. We heard what you did, Resell. Shooting your own captain and releasing a predator. There were extenuating circumstances. Resell is remanding himself to your custody, I said. Nikona squinted at the video feed. You look terrible. The guilt must be eating you alive. The treasonous officer pawed at his eyes. No, I just can't sleep a wink trapped with this creature. It's not his fault, he covered his eyes for the entire ride, he's tried staying out of sight, but knowing that he's present. Creature. What is Resell babbling about, Tarva, the Kolshan leader growled. Don't freak out okay? Please. I turned the camera toward the masked predator, who flailed his hand in front of him. There is Noah, the third and final passenger on our ship. He wants to speak to all of you. Chief Nikonis' eyes bulged. Is that a human? Yes. Why would you bring a predator here? Are you trying to set it loose on us? All we want is to talk. You're about to attack his planet. Shouldn't you hear from this supposedly evil species first, before you make a permanent decision? Doesn't he have a right to defend himself? Absolutely not. If you weren't on that vessel, Governor, I'd order it shot down. There was no hesitation from the Colchian host, which wasn't a promising sign. Would Nikonis even allow our ship to land at all? What would deter them from gunning Noah down? the second he set foot in the station. You permitted us entry, before you knew of the human's presence, I pleaded. Do the Venlol have a right to address the galaxy? The chief flared his nostrils. You have a right to speak, and to state your version of events on record. You're still a member of the Federation, at least, for now. Well, I wish for Noah to speak in my stead, and to be treated with the same rights as a Venlol citizen. Look in my eyes. I consider him one of my own. You have snapped, Tarva. There's millions of people down here who don't want that thing to set foot in our capital. Some of us still value our lives. It's one predator versus all of you. You have him well outnumbered. I can't let a dangerous beast into the governing chamber. What's to stop it from eating the nearest leader on television? To stand and gloat about the taste of our children's blood? He won't. 
But what if it does? Then you'll have documentation of what humanity was like when the Federation is asked by future generations why we made this decision, Resell interjected. But I'm telling you, these predators are more civilized than they look. Please, Nicolmus. Let Noah say what he's come here to say. You don't want people to think you have something to hide, do you? What harm can a few words do? Ugh. It can speak for five minutes, and not a second longer. If it so much as stares at anyone the wrong way or stumbles in its footing, it will be shot. The Colchian chief waved a tentacle assertively. Nor will I pledge for its safety after that time frame, even if it complies. Understand? Five minutes was hardly enough to break the ice, let alone cover everything in humanity's arsenal. It was a farce of a trial to appease the Venlo, after which, the Federation could rush to a summary judgment. Noah's body language betrayed little emotion, but he gave me a nod to signal his acceptance of the terms. I flicked my ears with forced politeness. We accept. And if you're interested in objectivity, parse through the data dump. That goes to anyone listening. I've uploaded it to social media under my credentials, explaining what we've learned since first contact. You're pushing your luck, Tarva. I have a lot of preparations to make. Do not disembark until my next transmission. The Colchian presider cut off the call, uninterested in waiting for my acknowledgement. That could have gone better, but it also could have gone much worse. Resell collapsed into the nearest seat while I turned back to the pilot's console. We were moments away from arrival and had just cleared the spaceport overhang. The ship touched down under my supervision, slipping its tendrils into the docking port. A thud hummed through the walls, and the engine commenced its cooldown process. I breathed a sigh of relief. The Colchians allowed us to complete our landing sequence, which was half of the challenge. The terminal was adjoined to the governance hall, similar to the reception lawn we had on Venlo Prime. I was pleased to see media personnel and cameras, all trying to catch a glimpse of the Predator diplomat. Non-essentials hadn't been evacuated, not yet, anyway. My play, to talk where everyone could hear us, had paid off. The more eyes on this whole debacle, the better. Noah peeked through the window. Knowing him, the ambassador was itching to survey the alien scenery. A red dot appeared on his forehead, and I screamed at him to get down. The predator dropped to the floor with lightning-quick reflexes. The human removed his mask for a moment, clearly short of breath. Those binocular eyes must be lost in a thousand-yard stare beneath that visor, he laid on the floor in silence for several minutes. I think he was worried if he stood up, the Federation was going to kill him. A trigger-happy shooter could take him out in a heartbeat. Resell studied the Predator, as he held his head in his hands. What are you thinking, human? the disgraced officer asked. Noah snorted. I'm wondering how the Arxer were ever uplifted, when it's obvious your hatred for Predators is so strong. Things would have been different for humanity if you were the first ones we found. We uplifted dozens of species before them, without issue, Resell explained. We wanted to accept all sentience. But all the research you did suggested the Arxer were different. Did prey species fight wars, Resell? Not in the way you do. Our wars were over limited resources, for survival, when there wasn't enough to go around. It wasn't about power, ideology, or bloodshed. That's why we thought we could fix the greys. I pinned my ears against my head. We were naive and stupid, but I missed the species we were then. Maybe we deserve what happened to us, because of our weakness. Of course not. I just don't understand how they took on you all at once. Noah pursed his lips and dragged himself back to a sitting position. Even with your help, there's no way we could steamroll the entire galaxy. Resell stifled a yawn. We had nothing to defend ourselves with then. The only survivors from that sector of space are the species that ran. We didn't understand what was happening. But why didn't you have any defenses? The Predator asked. You never even considered the possibility of being attacked? No preparation or contingency? 
You don't understand, because you've never known peace. Why would you have planetary defenses when all sapiens get along, as a rule? Why would you have warships if you never intended to use them? Humans had a very different experience on your world. I swiveled my ears down and allowed their conversation to float into the background. The last thing I wanted at a time like this was to discuss a topic as grim as war, especially when I'm sure Noah had stories that could traumatize me. There was no harm in closing my eyes, just for a few seconds. The world fizzled away, and my mind dissolved into the dark ocean of slumber. Tarva, wake up. Noah's visor was inches away from my face, I almost headbutt him when I jerked upright. The Colchians told us we can leave the ship. It's time. It appeared that Resell had already fled from the craft, which didn't surprise me. If I was a betting woman, I'd wager he was thrilled to be out in fresh air. Back on his own turf, even though it spelled catastrophe for him. The Colchian officer didn't want to be confined with a human any longer than necessary. I wonder what will happen to Resell. He's going to have several counts of treason stacked against him, I mused. The Colchians could hang him ten times over, if they want to. The human hoisted me to my paws, and half carried me over to the exit hatch. I leaned on him even after I regained my bearings, reluctant to let go. There was no telling what the Federation would do when we disembarked this ship, we knew for a fact that there were gunmen on standby. We climbed down to the octagonal terminal together, and I struggled to read my surroundings. Dazzling lights were pointed straight at us, likely intended to blind the predator. Noah winced, and brought a hand toward his eyes to soften the blow. The human must be grateful to have the tinted visor to shield his vision. I turned my head to the side, so that the glare wasn't head-on. Colchian soldiers were wrapping a trembling resell in chains, and stuffed a gag in his mouth. One of the guards whipped him on the chin with a nightstick. They seemed to feel more vitriol toward him than the human. Oops, the guard jeered. My bad. The officer whimpered, but didn't fight back against his captors. A pang of concern stabbed at my chest as they dragged the violet-skinned Colchon away. Then again, I suppose I should be more worried for Noah's safety now. Resell still had time to assemble a proper defense, whereas the predator could be dead at a moment's notice. A Colchian female raised a megaphone. Human, take slow steps forward. Walk until we tell you to turn. The human crept forward in shuffling steps, it was obvious he was unsure of his footing. My guess was his eyes were shut altogether. I curled my tail around Noah's wrist and steered him forward. His pulse raced, I could detect the hammering heartbeat through my fluffy tail. The camera lens zeroed in on me, no doubt stupefied that I would incite contact with such a creature. The fact that Noah's eyes were hidden probably helped our hosts keep their claws off the trigger. The soldiers directed us down a series of hallways, and I tried to look as relaxed as possible. The onlookers would attribute any fear to my proximity to the human. Optics were everything, at this point. I wondered how the leaders would react when we reached the governing chamber. The announcement of a human's arrival must have come as a shock, that wasn't what they imagined when they planned this visit. It was one thing to talk about a predator in the abstract, but another to see a waking nightmare in person. The Terran ambassador better have a damn good speech at the ready. Somehow, I didn't think the Federation gentry would welcome him with open arms. Date, Standardized Human Time, September 10, 2136. The human ambassador strode up to the microphone and scanned the cavernous auditorium. Every guard on the premises was flocked a safe distance away from the predator with rifles trained at his head. Barricades and barbed wire stretched in front of the podium. Hello, leaders and citizens of the Federation. My name is Noah, and I come seeking peace on behalf of humanity. Silence reigned supreme over the chamber, and the human's words hung in the air with an echo. The seats in the front row were vacated entirely, many of their occupants were sharing stations with the species near the rear wall. Others were pacing by the exits, and a few were absent altogether. Remote viewing must have seemed the best option. 
I am sure all of you have heard terrible things about my species. Perhaps some of them are even true. Predators ravaged your worlds and twisted your altruism, and you fear that we bear such intentions. Noah turned his head toward me, and I flicked my ears in support. But your conclusions are a product of confirmation bias, selecting only evidence that confirms your pre-existing beliefs. Humanity is not the same as the Arxer. The reporters in the upper decks were filming every word. Commentators spoke in soundproof booths, offering live opinions on some of the most influential political shows in the galaxy. The public viewing balcony was almost empty, so most of the citizenry would witness this display secondhand. The anxious murmurs rippling around showed this wasn't what anyone was expecting. They were expecting the human to come here, brandishing mocking footage and lobbying threats. It was clear they were concerned how close I was standing to Noah, a few tried to signal, run, to me with tail language. You come in here, wearing a mask, and think that hides what you are. Jerilim, the crocodile ambassador, leapt out of his seat in outrage. His feathers were puffed out behind him in a semicircle. You're a slaughtering lot of slavers. You round up and gas children. The nearest dignitaries glanced at the avian and signaled their agreement with tail waves and ear flicks. It seemed to embolden others to vocalize their opinions. Wars where millions die are a regular thing on your planet, Dark, the Farsal High Elder, joined in. Her thin ears drooped with horror. You use weapons that maximize suffering and destruction. You invade your neighbors and bomb cities, just like the Greys. Noah raised his hands placatingly. We have inflicted grave suffering upon ourselves, and I admit we have self-destructive tendencies. But as the Venlal can attest, there is another side to humanity. The side of us that is protective and familial, and has always reached to the stars in earnest. We have the traits of both predators and prey. Yeah, sure. Like what? Mortality? Breathing? Jerilim jeered. Let's start with the forward-facing eyes, which seem to be the focal point of your disgust. The human was unfazed by the widespread contempt, keeping his voice level. They evolved for depth perception, since primates are an arboreal class of mammals. They have nothing to do with hunting, and just happens to help with tracking and killing living creatures too, doesn't it? Funny. Mazic President Kupo interrupted. Well. Which ones of us look tasty to your arboreal eyes?" an unidentifiable voice asked. A cacophony of similar-minded leaders spoke up. Animosity and fear were two words that captured the collective mindset to a T. The shouts ranged from panicked, to accusatory, to blood-seeking. The Colchian guards stiffened as the meeting dissolved into chaos, no doubt they expected the discordance to elicit a violent response from the predator. You're just here to terrorize us. To scope out your enemies. You kidnapped our civilians. Your first action as a spacefaring species was to hold innocence against their will. Flesh-eating filth. You defile this chamber with your presence. Why did you assault the Gojids in cold blood? We should execute this beast. I'd like to see its head roll. My eyes widened in dismay, and Noah ducked his head. This was a beatdown televised to the galaxy, not any genuine attempt at listening. It was only solidifying the viewers' prejudices, hearing their leaders trounce any attempts for the predator to speak. I noticed a few dignitaries seemed interested in what the human was saying though, which was a glimmer of hope. Silence. I said we would let it speak, and I don't break my word. Can you not hold your tongues for a few minutes? Chief Nikonis roared. Noah took a deep breath to collect himself. Thank you. Unlike the Arxer, humans are omnivores. That means our diet is primarily plants. Plants, vegetation, you hear me? We are capable of subsisting without meat, and some of us choose to do so. But you eat flesh. Jerilim called from the crowd, ignoring the chairman's glare. Yes, you personally. Air, yes. No animal has to die, thanks to science. We grow our meat from cell samples in a lab, 
the predator added quickly. Does that not overrule the moral dilemma? Of killing another creature? There is no suffering caused. We've done our best within the confines of our nutritional needs. The representatives bore squeamish expressions. While the ethical argument was correct, the mental image that answer evoked was unsettling. They were probably visualizing an unmasked Noah, stooped over a maggot-ridden corpse, with blood dripping down his chin. How could they take the person talking seriously with that thought? Humans seemed to understand the reaction when we asked how they would feel, if they knew someone chowed down on human legs. It wouldn't matter whether they were ethically sourced. The idea of consuming animal parts was utterly reprehensible to most species. I respected the Terran's honesty, but that wasn't earning him any brownie points with the Federation. Even when I thought about Noah munching into some artificial animal carcass, it made me shudder. I was happy he didn't do it in front of me, but I still preferred not to think about it. There was a crevasse of my mind that wondered if humans would find Venmal tasty. Did that craving really make the lovable ambassador salivate? Nikonis retched into the waste bin under his station. Growing flesh in a vat? Let's change the subject, please. Gladly. I don't have time to go over everything on the data cache Tarva shared with you all in detail, as I hoped, the predator stated. But we've included our art, music, relationships, philosophy, culture, architecture, and scientific achievements. You may find beauty in our creation and innovation. I finally found my voice. The experiments conducted by the Venmal, which prove humans have a wide range of softer emotions, have been uploaded as well. Your scientists are welcome to review those findings, and I promise, they are replicable, if you wish to see for yourselves. Ultimately, this is about you, not us. Do you want to kill a race of thinking, feeling people? because they are predators. Just because they have a violent history and a few biological traits you curl your noses at? Is that reason enough to? Jerolim tossed his sunset-colored beak. Yes. If cruelty and violence are reason enough to genocide a species, we should kill all of you. Noah had synced his holopad to the auditorium projector and cast a video to it. You want to wipe out humanity without ever hearing us out, with no remorse. How would you respond in our position? What choice are you giving us? A handheld video of a young predator appeared on screen. I winced as recognition dawned on me, and I realized where Noah was taking this. Marcel was holding a light pink baby prey creature in one arm, feeding it milk with a bottle. The infant suckled eagerly, while the human supported its tiny front legs with gentle fingers. The leader's expressions softened at the cute animal, though they seemed worried about the predator dropping the ruse and gobbling it up. This is Marcel. He volunteers to care for animals in his spare time. Before we learned about the Arxer, he wanted to go to veterinary school. He's never consumed meat in his life. Noah swiped a button. The footage switched to a news reel, which captured Marcel as he was carted away for emergency care. The prolific wounds presented a stark deterioration from the pristine condition he was in before. It was tough to tell this gaunt, ungroomed human was the same fellow. The red-haired primate looked like a wild predator plucked from the woods. Gasps echoed around the room, and I was relieved to see some genuine pity. Many species averted their eyes. I don't believe even the ones who wanted humans dead could stomach the execution of such violence. The entire galaxy is going to see this, once the tapes reach them. Noah is forcing them to feel empathy for a predator. The film transitioned to close-ups of the bruises, the emaciated bones, and the neck burns beneath the asphyxiating collar. The haunting finale was a photo of Marcel unconscious in a hospital bed, with a sobbing slanik at his side. This is what your captain did to an herbivore human. Sovlin starved him and laughed at his pain while Marcel begged him to stop. The Terran ambassador's voice climbed with indignation, and he shook his head in disgust. It was cruelty for cruelty's sake. How can you say you're any different than the Arxer? If that's not predatory behavior, I don't know what is. Wait, 
He's not our captain, he answers to Pyrie. We didn't tell Sovlin to do that. We had no idea he went that far, Nikonis growled. I want justice. I want a trial, by your laws or ours. Can you imagine if a human treated one of your people like that? What would you be saying about us? It doesn't matter what you do. You need to die either way, Jerilem muttered. The whole idea is that you don't have the chance to fuck us over. You're not like us. But who decides who lives or who dies? Who is like us? What precedent are you setting? Perhaps there's an intelligent scavenger out there who wouldn't hurt a fly. The human paused for effect and raised a confident hand. A predator who only eats insects and small game. A territorial herbivore who might lash out at you. Maybe just a tree-dwelling creature who gets targeted for their eyes. Cupo flared his trunk. T this is ridiculous. Your whole argument is hypothetical. Yes. It's the hypothetical, that maybe, just maybe, we could be your friends. That's what I want you to consider. How do we know you won't turn on us? The Mazik returned, a hint of fear seeping into his voice. You don't. But you're going to lose this war without our help, and adding us into the mix basically guarantees it. Even if you believe that chance is slim, humanity is your only chance at victory. Work with us to fight the Arxer, as we have offered from the start, or we can all die together. It is your choice. Thoughtful expressions cropped up across the chamber, as the logic of the human's words sank in. Noah saved a compelling argument for last, appealing to reason where empathy could not prevail. Even if this whole thing was an elaborate ruse, it wouldn't affect the war's outcome to fall for it. Nikonis tapped his microphone. All right. That's enough, human. Of course. I'd just like to mention. No. I let you speak over your allotted time, since these fools kept interrupting you. You can't say I'm being unfair. Right. Thank you. The human stepped back from the podium and seemed to be awaiting further instruction. Chief Nikonis prior words, about not vouching for his safety after the speech, rang in my ears. Would the Colchian soldiers really shoot a diplomat in cold blood, after everything they witnessed? Exit the chamber with slow steps, and follow the trail of lights on the floor. Nikonis spoke. We've prepared living arrangements. I expect you, at least the human, to stay there indefinitely. I will retrieve you too when all parties have reached a decision. I hovered at Noah's side as we walked out, and visible relief tugged at my features. The Terran ambassador spotted the emergency lights along the baseboards and trudged away with quiet reservation. My mind was reeling as we scaled a narrow stairwell, but I was just grateful the human was alive. The selected living arrangements were a full diplomatic suite, complete with plumbing and a kitchenette. Two trays of fruit mash, with an algae and grain garnish, waited on the bedstand. Noah's species needed more protein in their diet. However, I wasn't going to explain that when the Colchians were serving him a gourmet meal, the same as everyone else. They could have starved him and tossed him in a dingy cell. The human flung off his visor. After wearing it for days, the rough metal had left an indentation around his eyes. A deep sadness danced in his chocolate irises, and months of weariness bubbled to the surface. I'm trying so hard, Tarva. This was my dream, Noel muttered. I placed a paw on his shoulder. You were amazing. The predator sighed. It didn't feel like that. It felt like nothing I said mattered. You're wrong, a new voice chimed in. As with most things in life. The hate-infused rhetoric stems from a vocal minority. Idiots speak the loudest. Reasonable people tend to be the quiet ones. The human's head snapped up, and his eyes locked on the Zerulian at the door. The Zerulians were a neighboring species to us and the Gojids. With their quadrupedal anatomy, shaggy brown fur and cub-like ears, they looked smaller than they were. I imagine the visitor triggered Noah's cute response, which made him all the more aware of his predatory visage. 
the Terran ambassador practically fell over himself to scoop his visor off the floor. He pressed a hand to his face in the interim, peeking between his fingers in comical fashion. Noah fumbled with his headgear, panicking. Air, I apologize. I wasn't expecting company so soon. Don't be ridiculous. You don't have to apologize for your appearance. Leave the visor off, friend. The male Zerulian averted his eyes briefly, before continuing. I'm Chao Sun, behavioral scientist with the Galactic Institute of Medicine. May I come in? Yes, go ahead. Please do, Noah said. I've been speaking in our Prime Minister's ear, before you ever went on stage. He's my brother, the scientist explained. Those Venlil experiments are irrefutable. You sympathize with our plight, and you take no joy in suffering. With that new evidence in mind, we're willing to change our position on humanity. You are? I'm thrilled to hear that someone can grasp the truth. At long last. The Zerulian government expresses our desire to begin anew, and I only hope that doesn't come too late. Would you like to open diplomatic relations? Noah's eyes crinkled around the edges, which indicated that a smile was hidden beneath his mask. The Terran ambassador felt his mission was worthwhile, if he swayed a single species. That wondrous enthusiasm returned to his predatory gaze, as bright as the day we first met. Yes, we would like that, very much. More than you know. Humanity's door is always open.